Hi everybody, welcome back to the next in my updated for 2024 series of beginner's guide to modding PC DAISY servers. And in this one, we're going to be looking at loot and how to make it spawn in pristine or undamaged. Basically so that it lasts longer, because we've all had that frustrating experience of running around the map and you finally find that nice weapon you wanted, an M16 or a Mosan or a Blaze or something like that, but it's badly damaged and you don't have a weapon repair kit and use it a few times and then it's ruined. So by making things spawn in pristine, they last an awful lot longer. Um, and it's really easy to do this one. But before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that in the description below this video, you'll find a link to the playlist that has all of these updated for 2024 Daisy PC community server videos in it, because this is a series of videos. Um, and you'll, you'll also see a previous video link and a next video link, because I've tried to record them kind of in a logical order. So that if you're very new to this, each video builds on the last in expanding your knowledge and skills on how to actually do this. So let's get started. Now, the files we're going to be looking at are globals.xml on your server and CFG spawnable types on your server as well. These are the ones that control damage. So what we're going to do is go over to your um, server dashboard um, i'm using nitrado as an example here so i'm over at the dashboard and then what we want to do is we want to go into the file browser let's so go to the file browser and then we'll want to go into daisy standalone and then we need to get ourselves inside the missions folder or the missions directory mp missions and once we're in there we want to go into churnus well i want to go into churnus for this server because it's a churnus server if you were working on a livonia server it would be enoch so we click on Chernus, and then we want to go into the DB directory, um, or the DB folder, and then the file we're interested in is globals.xml. Now, again, I don't always recommend editing editing files in the in the uh, web browser, but this one we've only got a few little changes to do, so we're going to do that. So click on that. Um, obviously, you can download it as well. And globals.xml has some really interesting settings in it. Um, I think we've talked before about the um, logging in value, haven't we? Have we uh, time login? Yeah. So what we'll do now is we'll look at this one here. So what we're after is variable name equals loot damage max and variable name loot damage min. Um, and then you see we've got two values here. What this means is when loot da um, spawns in on your server, the minimum damage it can have is zero, which means pristine. So it can spawn in pristine. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? However, the max damage it can spawn in is 0.82, which I think is badly damaged. I don't think you ever find anything ruined on a server when you pick it up. But um, it's badly damaged. So what we can do is if we change that 0.82 to 0.01, like that, um, and then we save the changes, that means a lot of loot will now spawn in once we've restarted the server so those changes take effect pristine and this makes a massive difference when you're playing the game honestly when you can pick something up and it's pristine the amount of life it has is an awful lot now while we're here as well i'll tell you what we will do so we can change the time login um, as well um, so if you go down to time login change that to five seconds i just think that's like a nice quality of life so when you boot up the game and you want to get into your server it only takes five seconds to get in, especially important if you're running a local server. You'll remember in a previous video, it talks about how important it was to have a local server so you can test things. Well, if you're not having to wait 15 seconds, you're only having to wait five. That can make a big difference. If you want to, change the log out as well. Obviously, it depends on the server. If you want to avoid the situation where people are combat logging, so whereby they're getting into a firefight and they're just logging out to, to save themselves, then you don't want your time log out to be short, to be honest. In fact, you may even want to make it longer. But the important thing for this one was loot damage max and loot damage min. Um, and then we'll save those changes and then we would then restart the server. Now, I'm not going to restart the server quite yet because there's another file we need to look at to make sure that almost everything will spawn in uh, pristine um, and undamaged. So what we need to do, we need to go back to the MP missions folder. Um, and what we're after now is the CFG spawnable types fo file. Now this one's a bit longer, so we don't want to be editing this on the web browser. We want to download it to our computer. So if you click on the little green download button, 
that will then download there we go okay so I've gone to my downloads folder on my computer and as you can see I've downloaded lots of these so it's number seven but what we're gonna do we're just gonna do we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call it uh, server damage there we go and we're just gonna drag and drop that server CFG sorry CFG spawnable types into server damage there we go so that's there and then we're just gonna um, left click it and then we're just going to get rid of that so that is now CFG spawnable types and now we want to edit it so I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit it with notepad plus plus you could edit it with notepad if you want remember notepad plus plus is very powerful highly recommend notepad plus plus when you come to do more advanced things it can be very, very useful and at a minimum it color codes stuff so it's easier to see mistakes now CFG spawnable types is an incredibly important uh, file in your server what it does is it answers certain questions that the server might have when it spawns something in. One of them being, when I spawn something in, should it have a different damage value to the value that is in globals.xml? So the damage value that you find in CFG spawnable types.xml overrides the damage value that is in globals.xml, which is a bit of a pain because it means that we've got to go through, we've got to change these things. Now, another thing that CFG spawnable types does, and we're going to cover this in other videos as well, but we might as well talk about it while we're here, is that for an individual entry, it also um, tells the server what things could be spawned in with that particular item or in it, if you'd like. So an example of that would be the plate carrier vest. So here we have the plate carrier vest camo. There's the entry, so you've got an opening statement, type, name, and then it has the class name, plate carrier vest camo. It's got a damage value, great, which we're going to change in a bit. But you can see here we have attachments. So attachment could be the plate carrier holster, so you can carry a pistol, and the plate carrier pouches camo. So it's the you know, put your magazines in there as well. And you can see we've got percentages here. So you've got a 10% or a 0.1% 0.1 chance of getting atta an attachment and then you've got a 0.85 or 85 point chance of that being a plate carrier holster camo or a plate carrier pouches camo um, so with this particular one they're not exclusive things the plate carrier holster camo and the plate carrier pouches they can have the, the vest can have both of those things on that's why they don't have to add up to 100% but if you had something like a uh, let's have a look M4. Here we go. So if we look at an M4, uh, all right. So the MP5K submachine gun. Here we go. This is a good example. So we've got the MP5K submachine gun. If you weren't aware of it already, the, the MP5K or the SG5K can have lots of different attachments on it. Um, and if you come down to the scope, so when you find an MP5K on a vanilla server, it has a 20% chance of having a scope. And then of those scopes, it can have one of all, one of these, an ACOG, a Reflex, an M4, an M68, or the backup iron sights. Um, and then you have a 30% chance of that, 20. So if we add these up, so that's 30, 20, 50, 70, 80, 100%. Now they have to add up to 100% because these are exclusive items. The MP5K can't have two scopes on it you can only have one so the ch the chance has to add up to 100 so anyway so that's a brief introduction we will be covering that in detail later on when we look at how to spawn in guns with scopes and, and all sorts of stuff but for now we're talking about damage now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of edit these in a very simple way now there is a better way of doing this and if you're good with find and replace you'll probably know what that is so what we're going to do is we're going to left click and we're going to drag across and we're just going to highlight this whole statement and then we're going to right click and we're going to copy that then we're just going to left click a little bit higher up and we're just going to do control f and we're going to go click on the replace button here so click on replace and then we're just going to paste in with control v the, the statement and then we're just going to click in replace with and control V and replace it with the looks like the same thing but we're just going to change that to 0.1 so the damage minimum is 0, 0.0 so pristine and the maximum uh, the max will be 0, 0.01 which I think is pristine as well and we're just going to say replace all okay so it's done eight things now that won't be all of them 
If you're familiar with how to use wildcards, you could use those to replace all of them, but we can't. So all we're going to do is just going to scroll down, and you're just going to go through and you're just going to look for, for it. So there we go. So we've got another one here that's different. So damage 0.1, max equals 0.6. So we're just going to copy that statement there. Left click above it. Control F for find. Find a replace. And we're just going to paste in what it says on the top. Now our replace with is still the same. So we say replace all. So oh, there's only one of those. Bit of a bummer. So let's scroll down. So car radiators. So we could just right click, copy that. Left click above, control F. Click on find and replace. Paste that over the top. We've, our bottom statement is still the same. Replace all. So there's 18 things. And we just keep scrolling down. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. Till we find some more damage stuff. Shells. Nothing there. See, these have already been done. We've already caught these. Scrolling down. Nothing there. I'm, all I'm looking for is that damage statement. You can kind of see. You can kind of get used to looking for them, to be honest. If I haven't missed one already. In fact, what we could do is, if we do Control F and we search for uh, d damage, so you just go damage like that, we can say find all, and then we can see we've got the entries here. So we can just scroll down, right, so there's another one. So AKM, damage min equals 0.45, max equals 0.85, so let's left click, let's copy that. Let's highlight that, right click, copy, left click somewhere else, Control F, go to replace, Control V, paste that over the top, replace all, and it's done three. So then we can just left click down here and go to the next one. 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Right click, copy, replace. Control V, paste that over the top. Let's get rid of that space there. Replace all. Ten occurrences. And so on and so forth. So you're just going along and you're just replacing them all and changing them so that you haven't got anything that will spawn in damage. And then you just want to hit save before you carry on. Now we're almost done, but you'll remember one of the things we always talk about is whenever we edit any files, we always validate them before we re-upload them. So we're just going to go to um, XML validator. So xmlvalidation.com. We're going to click on choose file. And I'm going to go to my downloads. I'm going to go into the server damage folder with this. So there's CFG spawnable types. Just going to click on open and we're just going to click on validate. No errors were found. Now, if, if an error was found, you could uh, it will tell you what line that error is on. However, sometimes that error may be caused by something that was going on further up in the file. So if it's not immediately obvious what the error is, which tends to be something like you've missed off a bracket, or you've pasted something twice by mistake. Remember that we've still got on our server the vanilla version of CFG spawnable types here. So we so that's kind of our backup if we wanted to. You know, we could download that and then we could just start again and maybe be a little bit more careful and make sure we didn't get an error that way. Um, if you do a quick YouTube search or a Google search for uh, vanilla daisy files how to get you'll see that you can go to the uh, bohemian interactive github repository as well and download the original files as well so you can have a backup on your computer okay but that's it really we're, we're good to go now so all we need to do is go to the bottom of the root directory for the mission which if i go to the top of show so it's daisy standalone mp missions daisy offline plus or enoch if it was ammonia click on upload file so this is the file we want, CFG spawnable types. We can click open. That will then upload it over the top of the existing one. And in fact, what we could do is if you click on this in the browser, we're not going to do any editing, but we could scroll down and you could just look for damage. There we go. So we can see straight away the damage has been changed. So we know the file is there. One more thing, actually, before I continue. Sometimes you'll get a delay, and it's a very strange bug that happens this you'll get a delay you'll upload a file over the top of an existing one 
and when you'll go into it it will still show the old file if that happens don't worry about it do it again to make sure you've done it correctly do a restart on your server and then go and have a cup of tea or something and wait a bit because sometimes there's some there's something going on in the background at nitrido and sometimes on other server providers as well where you get this delay in in changes to taking effect in fact sometimes you'll find that changes have already taken effect on the server but the file appears to be the old one so don't sweat that too much so once we've done that we click restart server do that now what's going to happen next is that your server is going to restart and it's going to start working unfortunately all that damaged loot that's already on the server the stuff that spawned in damaged or worn will still be there and depending on the lifetime that's set in the type of that XML, it's slowly gonna slowly gonna start to to disappear. But when it does get replaced, it will get replaced by pristine stuff. And how fast that happens really depends on how busy your server is with people, and whether you changed the idle mode countdown um, as we did in a previous video, so that your server doesn't go to sleep straight away when the last person leaves. Um, but don't worry about it, it's just the natural thing that happens on your server. It will slowly be replaced and eventually everything will start to spawn in pristine. Okay, so hopefully you found this useful. If you have, hit like. If you want to see more the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.